You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. This is episode number 113. Welcome to the Live and Lead for Impact podcast. I'm Kirsten Ross, your host, and thank you for joining us. You're in for a real treat today. I have Victoria Stigliano Zuban today, and she's an animal spirituality facilitator, enlightenment mentor, and energy practitioner. She helps conscious, open-minded animal lovers and guardians learn to better communicate and connect with the animals in their lives so they can create stronger and more mutually beneficial relationships with each other. So Victoria, thank you so much for being here. And I tell you, after hearing what you're up to and the impact that you're working to make in this world, I'm really excited to hear more about what you do. So thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So tell me, what specifically um, are you motivated to do in this world? What kind of impact are you working to make? Uh, a very big one. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to actually um, change people's thoughts about being an animal guardian and also be uh, actually actually understanding the animals of this planet okay. in order to make the planet safer for the animals. Okay. And can you tell me a little bit more about what that looks like? What, oh. What's the concern? Like what happens when we don't understand the animals? We basically hurt them in without even realizing it. And I mean, there are a lot of um, beliefs about animals that they're property and all that stuff. And that needs to go away because mm -hmm. they're, they're souls just like we are. So they have the thoughts, they have the feelings, they have the, they have free will also. Most people forget that. Mm -hmm. um, they are really just like us, just in little bodies, mm -hmm. you know, and people need to realize that we need to relate to them on a, a more evolved level so we can communicate better and live, cohabitate um, in ways that are beneficial for both parties. Now, so do you focus mostly on animals that are kind of living in a home with someone or is it, could it be on a farm or just those that we encounter as we're walking through the park, like squirrels or do you, All of the do you mostly really? <laughs> okay. Yes. I actually, um, I, I do a lot, obviously, you know, working when you're working with people, you tend to work a lot with the the animals that are in their homes. So yeah. you've got cats and dogs, but yeah. I have worked with uh, horses. Um, I recently worked with a pig um, and any, I mean, I get little critters in the house, you know, like we all do spiders and mice. And yeah. stuff. I, I try to create relationships with them as well. Okay. Um, I make it funny. I'm like, well, they have to follow the house rules. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it, it is completely, it goes the th the whole gamut from um, the domesticated animals that we share in our okay. homes and farm animals and also the wild animals out. So, okay, this begs the question. So what happens when a spider gets into your house? What do you do? So you said well, you make it comfortable. They can stay as long as what are they the follow rules? the rules. Yeah, what are the rules? And what would happen if they don't follow them? I must know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they're not allowed in our sleeping areas. Okay. Um, and they're not allowed to create webs in places that um, can be a pain in the neck. Now, no, most of my spiders that I have inside the house, not in the basement, but inside the house, don't make webs. So we're good there. Okay. Um, but uh, we have a little tiny vacuum that sucks them up without killing them, and we evict them. So okay. if they break <laughs> the rules, 
they get evicted. They back have the certain wild. spots. Yes, they okay. go back out in the wild. <laughs> and if it's too cold outside, I'll put them in the basement. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, it is funny. I have to admit, I am someone who doesn't kill spiders. Um, I will yeah. put them outside. I do remember, though, years ago, I mean, this is a long, long time ago, I was... Um, there was this spider that was cohabitating with me. It had made a web, but it was in my living room and it was kind of in a corner. It was kind of out of the way, but then it started catching stuff and dropping stuff on the ground. And (laughs) and at that point I was like, yeah, I don't know if we can continue this little relationship that we have. You're, you're messy. No, you're messy. He was was cleaning up your home. (laughs) This is true. This is true. (laughs) So, um, what life experience has motivated you to make this impact? Well, a a lot. Um, when I actually in the last, now it's going on 12 years. Um, but in the last 12 years, I've lost a lot of animals Mm. and most of them, you know, was cancers, kidney failures and stuff like that. And as I was going through the process of being there for them and holding space for them, whatever, I just realized that there are certain relationship things that I needed to do to help them as they were in their, you know, their terminal end, you know, Mm -hmm. so like one of my cats, I ended up being the human wheelchair, wheelbarrow, basically, Mm -hmm. because they couldn't walk, but they still want to use a litter box. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize that they're still life and they just want to be supported. And through all of this stuff, I think I've lost, uh, I've lost 10, 10 animals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the last 12 years, mm-hmm. a lot of death mm-hmm. and a lot of experience and a lot of intimate time with my animals. And, and they were talking to me and it took me a, a few to realize that these animals were definitely talking to me. So when Mm -hmm. they're sick and when they're, you know, when you're in that state of what do I do? Do I bring them to the vet? Do I put them down? Do all that stuff? I basically turned that control Mm -hmm. and choice over to the animal. Mm. And, and something amazing happened. I mean, I was actually seeing them giving me the information that I was asking for. Hmm. which was kind of strange. Um, But I started to respect them. They were no longer my property. They were no longer my fur babies. Mm -hmm. They were another living being Mm -hmm. who has their own choice, Hmm. who has their own wants and needs. And I just began to honor them. And now here I am. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, it's been amazing. It's been really amazing. So they just, first, I just started realizing that they're always talking to us hmm. and all they want is to be respected and treated humanely and, and that's it and loved. So <laughs> if we think about a cat and I have two cats actually, um, mm-hmm. uh, kind of explain, you know, when you say they'd speak to us, can you maybe explain for people listening what that looks like in a cat or sounds like in a cat? Um, okay. Well, it's, they, they speak in many different ways. Um, one of them is obviously body language. Mm -hmm. We all know that that's an, uh, that's an obvious, it's pretty easy to, to know when a cat is happy and when a cat is sad Mm -hmm. and when a cat is mad. Um, same with dogs. It's very easy. They also, um, speak energetically. Now, mm-hmm. if you are aware and you are paying attention to your animal, you can sense, even if their behavior is kind of neutral, mm-hmm. you can sense if they're stressed, if they're, if they're mm-hmm. fearful, if they're happy, if they're mad. Mm-hmm. Um, because just because a cat's sitting there and not doing much doesn't mean they're 100% happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. They may still have you know, a little bit of a stress going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. So those are the the two ways that we, they also orally, we all know that they Mm -hmm. meow, they purr. Mm -hmm. um, And then there's the telepathically. Now that's the part that takes practice. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's the part that takes practice. And you have to pay attention to all of them. Like when I was going through um, 
the the hospice care I call it with my mm-hmm. animals I always went by what was in their eyes like if their eyes were bright mm-hmm. and if they get it if their eyes got uh, if their pupils got a little dilated when they saw you because they were happy that you were there mm-hmm. um, the eyes can tell you an awful lot if you look at the eyes and they're and and you really look into them and you they feel sad to you mm-hmm. or there's nothing like when my mm-hmm. cats were when my cats chose that okay they're done they literally disconnect so when mm-hmm. they look at you they're not looking at you anymore mm-hmm. they're just kind of looking in your direction yeah. um and those are some of the ways that I was able to commu- to to get what they were saying um to me as mm-hmm. I was going through the hospice care mm-hmm. and it worked out great now I've had not every animal is different. So I had one cat who she didn't want to let go. And it, it was, it broke my heart because I had to make the executive decision for her. Mm. Um, she had cancer and Mm -hmm. it was, she couldn't drink water anymore. So that's a big deal. I mean, an animal can go a couple days without eating, but they really can't go without drinking. So, Mm -hmm. And she was going from, we, I always have lots of water bowls, and she was going from water bowl to water bowl trying to drink, and she couldn't drink. Aww. And it was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. And, um, but and then she jumped up on the couch. Yeah, a cancer cat jumped up on the couch, and I realized that her tumor had, had kind of burst. Um. And I had to, right then and there, it's like, I, it didn't matter. I knew she was suffering emotionally. Not physically, because she still wanted to drink and eat and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was not like I had, you know, sweetie, you know, we can't do this anymore. Mm. You know, I can't give you what you're looking for because you can't, you know, it's like it's time. And then, of course, we had that little telepathic little conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know the details of the conversation, but it was almost like once I had made the decision that this has got to happen she was like okay we and resigned to it Mm. um so now i know better because i i do a lot of animal communication now but i Mm -hmm. didn't back then Mm -hmm. um so yeah that's kind of how they talk to us yeah Okay. It's kind of a four four layer way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you think back to maybe some clients that you've worked with, what is one situation that really particularly fuels your passion? If you think back to the impact that you made um, with that family and their and their animals. Well, uh, most of my clients right now have been. Um, most of them have been in major traumatic things or in Mm. the moment of transition. So, um, I have to go into (laughs) the one thing that I did and it was probably, I felt the most grateful is, yeah, I've done a couple, you know, I do readings and, you know, to assess and figure out what the horse is trying to, or horse or dog or cat or whatever is trying to tell us. And one of the things I did was working with, um, it was a kind of a barter trade with one of my coaches and Mm -hmm. I was working with his dog Mm -hmm. and I just did a quick assessment and something told me, and that is because I'm an energy practitioner. Mm -hmm. Um, I was using my assessment tool, which is my pendulum and something was going on with one of the paws Mm -hmm. and it was like, Like, this needs to go to the vet. Like, I had this kind of had this, you got to get this checked out because there's something not right. Mm -hmm. And it kind of went where the person, um, it was uh, shared custody, and one of them didn't believe anything. Mm -hmm. And here we go, we go two or three months later, the dog can't walk anymore Mm -hmm. and had to have, uh, the paw was really infected and had Mm -hmm. to be lanced open and stuff like that. And, that was kind of a really great thing because the dog was telling me what was going on. Yeah. And it was verified. Maybe not right away because mm-hmm. we have to, I have to deal with, you know, the guardians, the animal sure. guardians. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was really, that kind of solidified what I would do. Like I was able to help this animal get 
the care it needed. Mm-hmm. It may have taken a little longer because we had to get through all of the 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 human belief systems. But you know, one part of the the animal's guardian, one guardian was like, "Oh no, this has got to go to the vet." The other one was like, "No, I don't believe this," and whatever. And there's nothing wrong. And <laughs> we yeah. found out that there was. Yeah. Um, that was a really big thing. And then another, another thing is when I get to talk to an animal that actually has personality mm-hmm. and you know that you're getting these weird things and like you don't know why they're saying things that they're saying. Mm-hmm. And then you go back and you talk to the guardian. And even though I've never met this animal in person, I mm-hmm. had that animal completely personality nailed down. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow. I I mean, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and so it was just like, I knew this was, I knew this was possible with my yeah. own animals. But yeah. once I started doing it with other people's animals, yeah. you know, I, I was able to find out that one horse was having a, a stomach issue. Um, they did not realize it. And I, I, was kind of doing my work on them and doing the read and my stomach started to gurgle and feel really bad. Mm -hmm. And then I went and told them and, Oh, we changed his food the other day and I didn't think it was, he liked it or something like that. It's like Mm -hmm. there was definitely something and that horse was on the other side of the world. So Mm -hmm. those are some kind of poignant moments. I mean, I have had a lot of, with my energy practitioner, like the, the, the energy work that I do, Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of, that stuff I yeah. helped an animal save his leg and I, I helped another one you know with some nerve damage and that just you know being a partner with the animal because I'm not mm-hmm. doing the healing the animal yeah. is and being able to have that relationship be able to speak with them and be able to do the things that they needed to do so they can do the work that they needed to do to heal themselves mm-hmm there's nothing better. Yeah. <laughs> nothing wow. better. <laughs> well, that's amazing. So yeah. tell me, what is the biggest internal or external challenge that you've had to overcome to make your impact? And how did you overcome it? Oh, gosh, um, I'm still dealing with it. Um, but I think I will probably always have to deal with it is basic confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, we have we as human beings are raised with certain beliefs and certain um, filters that people place upon us and we learn and grow because some of the things that we learn, I mean, at, you know, at five years old, adults know what's best. And when an adult says, you know, a horse doesn't have feelings, mm-hmm. um, you know, we tend to believe them because we're five and they're an adult. <laughs> mm-hmm. And those things can create and build and build upon them. And then we get these blocks about what could be um and then when you realize that those are not real and Mm -hmm. you're starting to see the truth it's really difficult Mm -hmm. to break away from all of the stuff that you were taught yeah it gets entrenched right yeah it gets entrenched and and then of course it also goes down to you know, how people treated us and Mm -hmm. how we walked through our world. Um, If you didn't think that you were good enough as a teenager, Mm -hmm. well, when you're 50, you may still have, you know, shadows of that in your psyche. So that's probably, so that's probably the biggest thing that gets Mm -hmm. in the way is just basic mindset and and confidence levels. Mm -hmm. Um, And, And what have you done to overcome that? I stopped thinking too much. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I I really, you know, it helps to talk to other people too, that especially people who look up to you. And like I have wonderful, wonderful friends and colleagues that um, when I get in these moments where I get afraid that, you know, and my confidence lacks, Mm -hmm. I have amazing people that kind of shine a light on the truth for me. Great. Um, and that really helps. So I think mm-hmm. surrounding yourself or surrounding myself which, with people who can see me for who I am and not with the same filters that I have in my head, mm-hmm. um, that helps a great deal. Um, and then just doing it, like just, like just take a breath 
and just do it. You know, like that Mel Robbins the five second rule, just do five, four, three, two, one, and you just do it. Yeah, or the Nike um, swoosh. <laughs> yeah, just, just do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just do it, yeah. and you know, and then you'll have a moment where like. Oh, I just did that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And the worst um, thing didn't happen yeah. and it wasn't as scary as I thought. And here we are on exactly. the other side. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I think mindset tends to be a big yeah. deal for a lot of people. And yeah. it's not something that you can fix and it's always fixed. Mm-hmm. We always are going to have these remnants of our past mm-hmm. and we're always going to have, that's why, that's why, you know, a journey is a journey. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like a, Hey, point A to point B, and I'm done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, no, it's a journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Yes, that is. It's a it's a constant battle, isn't it? To uh, yeah. to keep overcoming the stuff that's entrenched in, in uh, you know, and the constant reminder that it's not really our job to get everyone to see life from our perspective or agree exactly. with what we're up to because maybe they just never will, and and that's okay. exactly. And and you just let your passion fuel you. It's yes. like you know, you have this this desire to serve Mm -hmm. and you can't let the shadows of your past hinder that. That's right. That is right. So during tough times, how do you stay motivated and moving? Oh, (laughs) my, Mm -hmm. my network again, my network is always, yeah, that's a great team. (laughs) Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have good people around you that lift you up and they hold you accountable. Yeah. My husband, helps a lot um because if i need to talk through something um he'll you know he's good enough to to be able to talk and communicate with me objectively to help me kind of work through what i'm thinking Mm -hmm. um and if it's my own stuff if i'm getting in my own way Mm -hmm. i just have to i have to really i have to really hold myself accountable Mm -hmm. i have to get up and i have to if i have to sit at timer or something I have to do my lists do my planning and do all that stuff or I I get I go down the rabbit hole of Mm -hmm. insecurity and I just don't do anything so Mm -hmm. that's what I do my tough times those that's okay that's the best thing network Mm -hmm. is number one though network Mm -hmm. the people around you is definitely um definitely my go-to like if I struggle, I'm like I gotta I gotta talk to somebody. <laughs> let that let those voices be louder than the other ones, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so, what words of wisdom do you have for others who want to make an impact? Just do it. Really, I mean, figure out where you need to work on your mindset. Number one, mm-hmm. like what's stopping you from doing making an impact? Mm-hmm. Figure that out because that. Once that's figured out, the other stuff tends to get a little bit easier. It may not be easy, but it gets a little bit easier. Why are you doing it? Why do you want to do it? What's getting in your way? And just taking that first step and letting the passion and the love of service or whatever you want to do guide your journey. Awesome. It, yeah. Woo, keeping preach your it. Eye, keeping your eye on it. Yeah. <laughs> because we can we can hide that, but that passion is there for a reason and yeah. it's given to you for a reason and it wouldn't have been given to you if you couldn't achieve it. So, you know, figure it all out. Figure it out why are you doing what you want to do and what's stopping you. That's awesome. Great yeah. advice. <laughs> Thank you. So um, thank you so much. You have given people absolutely some um, great information to chew on and hopefully uh, will motivate anyone who is uh, letting mindset or, you know, either the thoughts that are happening in their own head or the words from others stop them from making their impact. You've given them some real great strategies to overcome that and, and just do it. Just yes, do it anyway. Yes, do it. Find and that support system. And surround yourself with yes. people who will support you and hold you accountable because a lot of people in our lives tend to cut us down. And they may not mean to do it, but they do. Yes. And just getting that, that getting your tribe around you. Uh-huh. Great. So I've got uh, your website if people want to get in contact with you as creativehealingandwellness.com. 
mm-hmm. correct? Yep. And I want everyone, you know, who's listening to know that I'll, I'll have that link at the show notes page. So if you want to find the show notes from today's episode, you'll go to defeatthedrama.com, click on the podcast tab, and then find the show notes for today with Victoria. Any parting words or any other um, information that you'd like to share about services that you provide or other ways that they can contact you? Well, yeah, I'm on Facebook. That's pretty much where I am okay. a lot of the time. So um, they can find me at Facebook. It's basically my my name, all one word, facebook.com, Victoria Stigliano Zuban. You know what, Victoria? Um, I'm sure that, that will be there. <laughs> yeah, send that to me, and I will put that on the show notes as well because that will okay. probably be easier. <laughs> yeah, and also if they went to creative, um, facebook.com slash creative healing and wellness, they'll go to my business page. Okay, okay. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I know everyone after listening to this episode is going to be making sure they have their strong tribe so that they can yeah. make their important impact. And yeah. they're going to be maybe looking at their animals a little differently and perhaps even spiders. Yes. <laughs> yes. They, they, they are there for us. They're, they're there to help us. So right. even though they're creepy and I'm still deathly afraid of them, uh-huh. we can, we can still cohabitate with them and yeah. we can ha- with mice and, and all of these things we're here. They all have a soul. It's yeah. just, you know, yes. <laughs> just being able to see them that way. <laughs> yeah. You'll be good. <laughs> yes. They're living beings. All yes. right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, I will look forward to your episode coming out. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.